Hello, yes. everyone. Uh, welcome to the last talk of the day. Last but not least, I hope. Uh, my name's Phil. I'm the head of solutions at Tempo. My name's Rob. I'm a solution engineer at Atlassian. And we're here to talk about Jira Line, Jira, and Tempo. So basically, what we kept to burn the boats, didn't we? Uh, <laughs> there's an element of not going back. Once we get to a certain level of scale, it's inevitable that you're going to need to start to bring, uh, bring order to this particular chaos. Um, and Jira Line is probably the way to go if you meet the right characteristics. You know, enterprise organizations, they want to embrace enterprise agility, but they have real world challenges, right? So it requires some traditional ways of working, like time tracking. So you'll hear us talk about working differently, but there's a balance about uh, keeping some uh, traditional methods of working. <laughs> Excuse the dad joke, but the, the, the people know what these acronyms are. <laughs> Parts per million, <laughs> liters per minute. No, but really, uh, PPM offers a robust framework that includes demand, portfolio management, uh, and LPM you know, is for enterprises that need to incorporate lean and agile ways of working into their portfolio management. So it, PPM is a critical success factor for helping to enable agile ways of working uh, to supporting, unlocking additional business performance across the enterprise. Essentially what it comes down to is you have a collection of products. They're all working together, all the projects, and everything kind of needs to fit and work well together. So you get this kind of nice smorgasbord, or I guess in this case it's a Reese's piece, uh, of making everything work together. But the stuff in the middle, the stuff that's contextually like the foundation for everything, still needs to work together, right? And all that lives in Jira at the moment. And you're going to be querying a lot of this on your portfolio management to understand what's happening and to truly manage your portfolio, whether you do traditional PPM, lean portfolio management, some version of strategic portfolio management, whatever PM acronym you end up working with. And, and you need to know it's, whoa, wait. Oh, we went back. Oh. There we go. Uh, so this, did we go too, we went too far, sorry about oh, that. Oh, we needed to practice this, At least. sorry. <laughs> Oh, see? All right, I'm going to talk over it anyway. So essentially, the larger the organization gets, obviously, the trickier the mm -hmm. problems become. Because at scale, everything kind of becomes exponentially more difficult because you're managing more and more things. More and more work items, more and more people, more and more teams, often more and more ways of working, right? And kind of herding these particular cats becomes tricky. So you need to start imposing some structure on how this stuff rolls up, how this stuff is managed, and how this stuff, oh, we never made it back to the other slide, huh? Uh, and how this stuff is communicated to each other because central to this particular conversation. Good Lord. We're on a roll today. <laughs> central to this communication is the fact that there is information here that needs to be propagated to everybody in your team. In the organization, you need to understand these are the blockers, these are the dependencies, this needs to happen in this order, yeah. these are the priorities, and this should not be a secret. They shouldn't live in some <laughs> COO's Excel sheet or whatever else, because we know they all have their pivot tables and everything else. Right, so you're gonna have questions. Can you adjust your budgets on the fly? How do you identify your bottlenecks? Are you, dying, are you identifying your dependencies in time to do something about it? You need to know what's happening, uh, and we're gonna give you that. So when you're looking for that answer, it's important to factor that help so when you scale, uh, the knowledge is gonna flow. And it's got to flow seamlessly. And if you are to pivot and avoid those bottlenecks when you scale. It might sound familiar, but like the pro proliferation of all the tools you have to enable this uh, to, so teams can act differently can kind of make this really difficult. So there's a lot of being work done, data in spreadsheets, documents, presentation and systems. So that knowledge has got to be captured somewhere uh, so you don't fly blind. I think we went over that, but basically that's the problem, right? There's a lot of information and not all of it is accessible, visible, and available to everybody. So people making the decisions, whether they are individual team, individual contributors, whether it's team leads, whether it's the CXO, whatever it happens, you should be making the decisions around the same collection of facts, right? And every decision, I think we'll come back to this a lot, 
every decision is effect, an investment decision in your organization, right? Because you're putting time, which is your money, at play in various organizations. So you want to make sure you're getting the most bang for your buck, working on the highest priority task that your organization has. Right, and that's where Jira Line comes in. You can think of it as your platform for enterprise agility. It brings together all the relevant information that you need for all the stakeholders. Uh, strategic portfolio management, product management, uh, uh, agile scale development, it unifies that platform so everyone has that transparency of strategy to execution. So we want all teams to understand where they fit in and how they work together. And our half of this particular Reese's cookie is the tempo side of things. So Jira Line sits at the top. It's where you all aggregate everything, but all your teams are still working in Jira. Jira is the foundational element to it. And Jira doesn't do very well, if I'm honest, without all the apps that go with it, right? So we at Tempo have a whole portfolio of apps. We do a lot of road mapping. We can do idea management. Uh, we also do a lot of project and program management with our structure apps. And then we have resource and cost management. So it's more than just the time sheeting. Today we'll focus on the timesheet element because where your individual team members are spending their time is the most pivotal element or the most important aspect of figuring out are we really doing the best we can in executing towards our most important priorities and our most important goals. So if you do it right, all the levels of the org will benefit. Uh, we have so much data, it isn't, in good, it isn't good unless you do it right and, and connect all the facts. That's why it's important to create a powerful foundation of your open uh, tool chain where you can use all of your Atlassian data and outside solution data like Tempo. So with this connected foundation, we can build up another dimension to connect the work to the people. Portfolio teams using value to set strategy and prioritize and fund the most important work. We want to deliver the most value as quickly as possible. Everyone's aligned to outcomes, and you want to make sure the dev teams are spending their time on the highest priority work. Developers not being bogged down when tracking time, and in fact, informing them of trends based on their activities. Dev needs to, to track time for finance, but they don't need to waste time tracking time. This is, I think, where one of the innovations that Tempo brings to the Pay, uh, brings to the table is really in, important. Using our automation and some of the machine learning functionality, developers can do their work, update tickets, and not have to spend any of their time creating work logs and tickets like that, because we can track where they spend their time, which Visual, like, Visual Studio code or where, which apps they have open and how much time they're doing there, plus which tickets they have open. And using our machine learning models, they will then be able to log time that way. It leads to a 50% faster time to logging this information. And obviously, the sooner you can log this information, the more accurate it's going to be. The more accurate, the better information you have to make decisions, which is what it all comes down to, right? The better information you have, the better decisions you can make. Accepted stories capitalized based on hours in, in Jira line. Accepted spend tied the strategy. So you can use these dollars and numbers for inspect and adapt decisions. Uh, CapEx for accounting and other systems of record, who did the work, who gets billed. Uh, the finance teams are thrilled even though we're practicing these new ways of work. We can make them pretend it was their idea. Essentially, <laughs> all this rolls up into your portfolio view so you can start to see where your teams are spending their time. Are you spending the most time on your highest priority tickets? Is the information aggregating correctly? Where, where do you need to intervene? Where do you need to start talking to different teams? And most importantly, when market conditions change or you have new signals that you have new priorities, because let's be honest, you can set a plan January 1st, but by the time you know, reality sets in, end of the quarter, end of the week, end of the half of the year, your priorities may change. And you need to be able to quickly pivot as fast as you can because the difference between the decision to pivot and when the team is actually pivot, that's waste. So the closer you can make that in time, the less waste you have as an organization. And then with the power of your data, you can tie multiple systems of record. So why would you care about this? Well, it allows for more nuanced conversations around portfolio investments and other things. 
uh, product or, or product like AAR becomes easier. Uh, we can do, uh, we can measure our uh, support infrastructure, IT ops. We can also bring that into view. Uh, we can identify areas for improvement, like smaller releases means smaller spikes. Uh, and we can bring along different areas of the company, like finance, by combining their old ways of working with our new enterprise agility numbers. And all this information obviously allows you to tie different groups of the organization together into where all this information kind of, or all the actions start to collect together. So tying it to the overarching theme of ITSM here, for example, you can start to see what your developer teams are working on when they release an item and what the impact is on your ITSM or your, your JSM impact. So you can start tracking spend, increases there, and you can put together the true cost of a release, for example, because it's not just developer hours, right? There are costs across the organization, especially when they have to spend time fixing something that was rushed out the door. And so this allows you later on, as you aggregate more and more data, to be able to make true decisions on if we rush this out, there's not just the cost right now, there's an aggregated cost over time to return to the norm, to drop the tickets, to increase your reputation back to where it was with the customers that were unhappy. And so that conversation all becomes visible with this data, all in one place. So in closing, you know, evolving your business agility, Jira Line and Tempo can help you accelerate and move faster into new ways of leaner, more agile approaches to decision making tomorrow. If you want to learn more about Jira Line and agile accounting, come see me at the Jira Line booth in the next few days. If you want to learn more about Tempo and, the, and Timesheets and the other market plugins, head over to see Phil. We'd love to talk shop a lot more. Thank Any you. questions now, we can try and take them. Uh, you'll have to yell at me, but that's OK. Um, and otherwise, you can come find us here or after at the booth. Any questions now? Awesome. Everything was super clear. I'm going to take that as a positive <laughs> sign. Thank, Thank you, guys. You.